North American B-25 Mitchell The North American B-25 Mitchell is an American twin-engine, medium bomber manufactured by North American Aviation, NEA. The design was named in honor of Major General William Billy Mitchell, a pioneer of U.S. military aviation. Used by many Allied Air Forces, the B-25 served in every theater of World War II and after the war ended many remained in service, operating across four decades. Produced in numerous variants, nearly 10,000 Mitchells rolled from the factories. These included a few limited models, such as the United States Marine Corps B-1 Patrol Bomber and the United States Army Air Force's F-10 Reconnaissance Aircraft and AT-24 Trainers. The Air Corps issued a circular. Number 38 to 385, in March 1938, describing the performance they required from the next bombers, a payload of with a range of at more than. Those performance specifications led NIT to submit their NA 40 design. The NA 40 had benefited from the North American XB 21, NA 39, of 1936, which was the company's partly successful design for an earlier medium bomber that had been initially accepted and ordered, but then cancelled. However, the company's experience from the XB-21 contributed to the design and development of the NA-40. The single NA-40 built flew first at the end of January 1939. It went through several modifications to correct problems. These improvements included fitting right R-2600 twin cyclone radial engines, in March 1939, which solved the lack of power. In March 1939, North American delivered the substantially redesigned and improved NA-40 as NA-40B, to the United States Army Air Corps for evaluation. It was in competition with other manufacturers' designs, Douglas 7B, Stearman X-100, and the Martin Model 167F, but failed to win orders. The aircraft was originally intended to be an attack bomber for export to the United Kingdom and France, both of which had a pressing requirement for such aircraft in the early stages of World War II. However, the French had already opted for a revised Douglas 7B, as the DB-7. Unfortunately, the NA-40B was destroyed in a crash on April 11, 1939 while undergoing testing. Although the crash was not considered due to a fault with the aircraft design, the Army ordered the DB-7 as the A-20. The Air Corps issued a specification for a medium bomber in March 1939, over at NA used the NA-40B design to develop the NA-62, which competed for the medium bomber contract. There was no YB-25 for prototype service tests. In September 1939, the Air Corps ordered the NA-62 into production as the B-25, along with the other new Air Corps medium bomber, the Martin B-26 Marauder off the drawing board. Early into B-25 production, NA incorporated a significant redesign to the wing dihedral. The first nine aircraft had a constant dihedral, meaning the wing had a consistent, upward angle from the fuselage to the wingtip. This design caused stability problems. Flattening the outer wing panels by giving them a slight anhedral angle just outboard of the engine nacelles nullified the problem, and gave the B-25 its gull wing configuration. Less noticeable changes during this period included an increase in the size of the tail fins and a decrease in their inward tilt at their tops. The continued design and development in 1940 and 1941. Both the B-25A and B-25B series entered use off service. The B-25B was operational in 1942. Combat requirements led to further developments. Before the year was over, NA was producing the B-25C and B-25D series at different plants. Also in 1942, the manufacturer began design work on the Cannon Arm B-25G series. The NA-100 of 1943 and 1944 was an interim armament development at the Kansas City complex known as the B-25D-2. Similar armament upgrades by U.S.-based commercial modification centers involved about half of the B-25 series. Further development led to the B-25H, B-25J, and B-25J-2. The gunship design concept dates to late 1942 and is sent a field technical representative to the SWBA. The factory-produced B-25G entered production during the NA-96 order followed by the redesigned B-25H gunship. The B-25J reverted to the bomber role, but it, too, could be outfitted as a strafer. NA manufactured the greatest number of aircraft in World War II, the first time a company had produced trainers, bombers, and fighters simultaneously, the at 6 snj Texan, B-25 Mitchell, and the P-51 Mustang. 
It produced B-25s at both its Inglewood main plant and an additional 6,608 aircraft at its Kansas City, Kansas plant at Fairfax Airport. After the war, the USAF placed a contract for the TB-25 leaders trainer in 1952. This was a modification program by Hayes of Birmingham, Alabama. Its primary role was reciprocal engine pilot training. A development of the B-25 was the North American XB-28, designed as a high-altitude bomber. Two prototypes were built with the second prototype, the XB-28A, evaluated as a photoreconnaissance platform, but the aircraft did not enter production. The majority of B-25s in American service were used in the war against Japan in Asia and the Pacific. The Mitchell fought from the Northern Pacific to the South Pacific and the Far East. These areas included the campaigns in the Aleutian Islands, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, New Britain, China, Burma and the Island Hopping Campaign in the Central Pacific. The aircraft's potential as a ground attack aircraft emerged during the Pacific War. The jungle environment reduced the usefulness of medium-level bombing and made low-level attack the best tactic. Using similar mast height level tactics and skip bombing, the B-25 proved itself to be a capable anti-shipping weapon and sank many enemy sea vessels of various types. An ever-increasing number of forward-firing guns made the B-25 a formidable strafing aircraft for island warfare. The strafer versions were the B-25C1-D1, the B-25J1 and with the strafer nose, the J-2 subseries. In Burma, the B-25 was often used to attack Japanese communication links, especially bridges in central Burma. It also helped supply the besieged troops at Impel in 1944. The China Air Task Force, the Chinese-American Composite Wing, the 1st Air Commando Group, the 341st Bomb Group, and eventually, the relocated 12th Bomb Group, all operated the B-25 in the China-Burma-India Theater, CBI. Many of these missions involve battlefield isolation, interdiction and close air support. Later in the war, as the USAF acquired bases in other parts of the Pacific, the Mitchell could strike targets in Indochina, Formosa, and Kyushu, increasing the usefulness of the B-25. It was also used in some of the shortest raids of the Pacific War, striking from Saipan against Guam and Tinian. The 41st Bomb Group used it against Japanese-occupied islands that had been bypassed by the main campaign such as happened in the Marshall Islands. The first B-25s arrived in Egypt and were carrying out independent operations by October 1942. Operations there against Axis airfields and motorized vehicle columns supported the ground actions of the Second Battle of El Alamein. Thereafter, the aircraft took part in the rest of the campaign in North Africa, the invasion of Sicily and the advance up Italy. In the Strait of Messina to the Aegean Sea the B-25 conducted sea sweeps as part of the coastal air forces. In Italy, the B-25 was used in the ground attack role, concentrating on attacks against road and rail links in Italy, Austria and the Balkans. The B-25 had a longer range than the Douglas A-20 Havoc and Douglas A-26 invaders, allowing it to reach further into occupied Europe. The five bombardment groups 20 squadrons, of the 9th and 12th Air Forces that used the B-25 in the Mediterranean theater of operations were the only U.S. units to employ the B-25 in Europe. The RAF received nearly 900 Mitchells, using them to replace Douglas Boston's, Lockheed Ventura's and Vickers Wellington bombers. The Mitchell entered active RAF service on January 22, 1943. At first, it was used to bomb targets in occupied Europe. After the Normandy invasion, the RAF and France used Mitchells in support of the Allies in Europe. Several squadrons moved to forward air bases on the continent. The USAF did not use the B-25 in combat in the Eto. The B-25B first gained fame as the bomber used in the April 18, 1942 Doolittle raid, in which 16 B-25Bs led by Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle attacked mainland Japan, four months after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. The mission gave a much-needed lift in spirits to the Americans, and alarmed the Japanese, who had believed their home islands to be inviolable by enemy forces. Although the amount of actual damage done was relatively minor, it forced the Japanese to divert troops for home defense for the remainder of the war. The raiders took off from the carrier and successfully bombed Tokyo and four other Japanese cities without loss. Fifteen of the bombers subsequently crashed land Eden route to recovery fields in eastern China. These losses were the result of the task force being spotted by a Japanese vessel, forcing the bombers to take off early, 
fuel exhaustion, stormy nighttime conditions with zero visibility, and lack of electronic homing aids at the recovery bases. Only one B-25 bomber landed intact, in Siberia where its five-man crew was interned and the aircraft confiscated. Of the 80 aircrew, 69 survived their historic mission and eventually made it back to American lines. Following a number of additional modifications, including the addition of plexiglass dome for navigational sightings to replace the overhead window for the navigator and heavier nose armament, to icing and anti-icing equipment, the B-25C entered USAF operations. Through Block 20 the B-25C and B-25D differed only in location of manufacture, C-Series at Inglewood, California, D-Series at Kansas City, Kansas. After Block 20 some NA-96 began the transition to the G-Series while some NA-87 acquired interim modifications eventually produced as the B-25D2 and ordered as the NA-100. NA built a total of 3,915 B-25CS&Ds during World War II. Although the B-25 was originally designed to bomb from medium altitudes in level flight, it was used frequently in the Southwest Pacific Theater in treetop level strafing and missions with parachute-retarded fragmentation bombs against Japanese airfields in New Guinea and the Philippines. These heavily armed Mitchells were field modified at Townsville, Australia, under the direction of Major Paul I. Pappy Gunn and North American tech rep Jack Fox. These commerce destroyers were also used on strafing and skip bombing missions against Japanese shipping trying to resupply their armies. Under the leadership of Lt. Gen. George C. Kenney, Mitchells of the Far East Air Forces and its existing components, the 5th and 13th Air Force devastated Japanese targets in the Southwest Pacific Theater during 1944-1945. The USAF played a significant role in pushing the Japanese back to their home islands. The type operated with great effect in the Central Pacific Alaska, North Africa, Mediterranean and China Burma India, CBI, theaters. The USAF Anti-Submarine Command made great use of the B-25 in 1942 and 1943. Some of the earliest B-25 bomb groups also flew the Mitchell on coastal patrols after the Pearl Harbor attack, prior to the OFAC organization. Many of the two dozen or so anti-submarine squadrons flew the B-25C, D and G series in the American theater anti-submarine campaign, often in the distinctive, white sea search camouflage. In anti-shipping operations, the USAF had urgent need for hard-hitting aircraft, and North American responded with the B-25G. In this series the transparent nose and bombardier-slash-navigator position was changed for a shorter, hatch nose with two fixed .50 in, 12.7 mm, machine guns and a 75 mm, 2.95 in, M4 cannon, one of the largest weapons fitted to an aircraft, similar to the British 57 mm gun-armed Mosquito MK. 18 and the German Henschel H's 129B3, and 288P heavy cannon, up to a 75mm long barrel board canon BK7,5. The shorter nose placed the cannon breech behind the pilot where it could be manually loaded and serviced by the navigator, his crew station was moved to a position just behind the pilot. The navigator signaled the pilot when the gun was ready and the pilot fired the weapon using a button on his control wheel. The Royal Air Force, U.S. Navy and the Soviet VVS each conducted trials with this series but none adopted it. The G-Series comprised one prototype, five pre-production C conversions, 58 C-Series modifications and 400 production aircraft for a total of 464 B-25G. In its final version, the G-12, an interim armament modification, eliminated the lower Bendix turret and added a starboard dual gun pack. Waist guns and a canopy for the tail gun or tow improve the view when firing the single tail gun. In April 1945 the air depots in Hawaii refurbished about two dozen of these and included the eight-gun nose and rocket launchers and the upgrade. The B-25H series continued the development of the gunship concept. Na Inglewood produced 1,000. The H had even more firepower. Most replaced the M4 gun with a lighter T-13E1. Designed specifically for the aircraft but 20 odd H 1 block aircraft completed by the Republic Aviation Modification Center at Evansville had the M 4 and 2 machine gun nose armament. The 75 mm, 2.95 in, gun fired at a muzzle velocity of. Due to its low rate of fire, about four rounds could be fired in a single strafing run, relative ineffectiveness against ground targets, and a substantial recoil. The 75mm gun was sometimes removed from both G and H models and replaced with two additional .50 in, 
12.7 mm, machine guns as a field modification. In the new FIF, these were redesignated the G1 and H1 series respectively. The H series normally came from the factory mounting four fixed, forward firing 0.50, 12.7 mm, machine guns in the nose, four more fixed guns in forward firing, individual gun packages, two more in the manned dorsal turret, relocated forward to a position just behind the cockpit. One each in a pair of new waist positions, introduced simultaneously with the forward relocated dorsal turret, and lastly, a pair of guns in a new tail gunner's position. Company promotional material bragged that the B25H could bring to bear 10 machine guns coming and foregoing, in addition to the 75mm cannon, 8 rockets and 3,000 pounds, 1,360 kilograms, of bombs. The H had a modified cockpit with single flight controls operated by pilot. The co-pilot station and controls were deleted, and instead had a smaller seat used be the navigator slash cannoneer, the radio operator crew position was aft the bomb bay with access to the waste guns. Factory production total were 405 B-25X and 1000 B-25HS, with 248 of the latter being used by the Navy as PBJ-1H. Elimination of the co-pilot saved weight. Moving the dorsal turret forward counterbalance the being part the waste guns and the manned rear turret. Following the two gunship series, NA again produced the medium bomber configuration with the B-25J series. It optimized the mix of the interim NA-100 and the H series, having both the bombardiers station and fixed guns of the D in the forward turret and refined armament of the H series. NA also produced a strafer nose first ship to air depots as kits then introduced on the production line in alternating blocks with the bombardier nose. The solid metal strafer nose housed eight centerline Browning M2.50 caliber machine guns. The remainder of the armament was as in the H5. Now also supplied kits to mount eight underwing five high-velocity airborne rockets, HVAR, just outside the propeller arcs. These were mounted on zero-length launch rails, for it to a wing. The final, and the most built, series of the Mitchell, the B-25J. Looked less like earlier series apart from the well-glazed bombardier's nose of nearly identical appearance to the earliest B-25 subtypes. Instead, the J followed the overall configuration of the H series from the cockpit aft. It had the forward dorsal turret and other armament and airframe advancements. All J models included 4.50 in, 12.7 mm, light barrel browning and slash M2 guns in a pair of fuselage package, conformal gun pods each flanking the lower O cockpit each pod containing two Browning 2S. By 1945, however, combat squadrons removed these. The J-Series restored the co-pilot's seat and dual flight controls. The factory made available kits to the air depot system to create the Strafer Nose B-25J2. This configuration carried a total of 18.50 in, 12.7 mm, light barrel and slash M2 Browning M2 machine guns, 8 in the nose. 4 in the flank mount conformal gun pod packages, 2 in the dorsal turret, 1 each in a pair of waist positions, and a pair in the tail, with 14 of the guns either aimed directly forward, or aimed to fire directly forward for strafing missions. Some aircraft had 8 5 in, 130 mm, high velocity aircraft rockets, HVAR. NA introduced the J 2 into production in alternating blocks at the J 22. Total J series production was 4,318. The B-25 was a safe and forgiving aircraft to fly. With one engine out, 60 degrees banking turns into the dead engine were possible, and control could be easily maintained down to 145 miles per hour, 230 kilometers per hour. The pilot had to remember to maintain engine out directional control at low speeds after takeoff with rudder. If this maneuver was attempted with ailerons, the aircraft could snap out of control. The tricycle landing gear made for excellent visibility while taxiing. The only significant complaint about the B-25 was the extremely high noise level produced by its engines. As a result, many pilots eventually suffered from varying degrees of hearing loss. The high noise level was due to design and space restrictions in the engine cowlings which resulted in the exhaust stacks protruding directly from the cowling ring and partly covered by a small triangular fairing. This arrangement directed exhaust and noise directly at the pilot and crew compartments. The Mitchell was an exceptionally sturdy aircraft that could withstand tremendous punishment. One B-25C of the 321st Bomb Group was nicknamed Patches because its crew chief painted all the aircraft's flak hole patches with a bright yellow zinc chromate primer. By the end of the war, 
This aircraft had completed over 300 missions, had been belly landed six times and had over 400 patched holes. The airframe of patches was so distorted from battle damage that straight and level flight required 8 degrees of left aileron trim and 6 degrees of right rudder, causing the aircraft to crab sideways across the sky. In 1947 legislation created an independent United States Air Force and by that time the B-25 inventory numbered only a few hundred. Some B-25s continued in service into the 1950s in a variety of training, reconnaissance and support roles. The principle used during this period was undergraduate training of multi-engine aircraft pilots slated for reciprocating engine or turboprop cargo, aerial refueling or reconnaissance aircraft. Others were assigned to units of the Air National Guard in training roles in support of Northrop F-89 Scorpion and Lockheed F-94 Starfire operations. In its USAF tenure, many B-25s received the so-called Hayes modification and as a result, Surviving B-25 often have exhaust systems with a semi-collectoring that splits emissions into two different systems. The upper seven cylinders are collected by a ring while the other cylinders remain directed to individual ports. TB-25J-25 NC Mitchell, 44 to 30,854, the last B-25 in the USAF inventory, assigned at March AFB, California as of March 1960, was flown to Eglin AFB, Florida. From Turner Air Force Base, Georgia, on May 21, 1960, the last flight by a USAF B-25, and presented by Brigadier General A.J. Russell, commander of SACS A-22D Air Division at Turner AFB, to the Air Proving Ground Center commander, Brigadier General Robert H. Warren, who in turn presented the bomber to Valparaiso, Florida Mayor Randall Roberts on behalf of the Niceville Valparaiso Chamber of Commerce. Four of the original Tokyo Raiders were present for the ceremony, Colonel. Later Major General, David Jones, Colonel Jack Sims, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Mansky, and retired Master Sergeant Edwin W. Horton. It was donated back to the Air Force Armament Museum circa 1974 and marked as Doolittle's 40 to 2344. The U.S. Navy designation for the Mitchell was the PBJ-1 and apart from increased use of radar, it was configured like its Army Air Force's counterparts. Under the pre-1962 USN-USMC-USCG aircraft designation system, PBJ-1 stood for Patrol, P, Bomber, B, built by North American Aviation, J, first variant, minus 1, under the existing American Naval Aircraft designation system of the era. The PBJ had its origin in an inter-service agreement of mid-1942 between the Navy and the USAF exchanging the Boeing Renton plant for the Kansas plant for B-29 Superfortress production. The Boeing XPBBC Ranger flying boat, competing for B-29 engines, was canceled in exchange for part of the Kansas City Mitchell production. Other terms included the inter-service transfer of 50 B-25C and 152 B-25D to the Navy. The bombers carried Navy Bureau numbers. BU knows, beginning with BU No 34998. The first PBJ-1 arrived in February 1943 and nearly all reached Marine Corps squadrons, beginning with Marine Bombing Squadron 413, VMB 413. Following the OFAC format, the Marine Mitchells had search radar in the retractable radom replacing the remotely operated ventral turret. Later D&J series had nose-mounted APS-3 radar, and later still, J and H series mounted radar in the starboard wing tip. The large quantities of B-25H and J series became known as PBJ-1H and PBJ-1J respectively. These aircraft often operated along with earlier PBJ series in Marine squadrons. The PBJs were operated almost exclusively by the Marine Corps as land-based bombers. To operate them, the U.S. Marine Corps established a number of Marine Bomber Squadrons (VMB), beginning with VMB-413. In March 1943 at Mika's Cherry Point, North Carolina, eight VMB squadrons were flying PBJs by the end of 1943, forming the initial Marine Medium Bombardment Group. Four more squadrons were in the process of formation in late 1945, but had not yet deployed by the time the war ended. Operational use of the Marine Corps PBJ-1s began in March 1944. The Marine PBJs operated from the Philippines, Saipan. Iwo Jima and Okinawa during the last few months of the Pacific War. Their primary mission was the long-range interdiction of enemy shipping trying to run the blockade which was strangling Japan. 
The weapon of choice during these missions was usually the 5-inch VAR rocket, eight of which could be carried. Some VMB 612 intruder PBJ 1D and J series flew without top turrets to save weight and increase range on night patrols, especially towards the end of the war when air superiority existed. During the war, the Navy tested the Cannon Arm G series and conducted carrier trial with an H equipped with arresting gear. After World War II, some PBJs stationed at the Navy's then rocket laboratory site in Inyokern, California, site of the present day Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake, tested various air to ground rockets and arrangements. One arrangement was a twin barrel nose arrangement that could fire 10 spin stabilized 5 inch rockets in one salvo. The Royal Air Force RAF, was an early customer for the B-25 via lend -lease. The first Mitchells were given the service name Mitchell I by the RAF and were delivered in August 1941, to No. 111 Operational Training Unit based in the Bahamas. These bombers were used exclusively for training and familiarization and never achieved operational status. The B-25 CS and Ds were designated Mitchell II. Altogether, 167 B-25 CS and 371 B-25 DS were delivered to the RAF. The RAF tested the Cannon Arm G series but did not adopt the series nor the follow-on H series. By the end of 1942 the RAF had taken delivery of a total of 93 Mitchell Marks 1 and 2. Some served with squadrons of No. 2 Group RAF, the RAF's tactical medium bomber force. The first RAF operation with the Mitchell II took place on January 22, 1943, when six aircraft from No. 180 Squadron RAF attacked oil installations at Ghent. After the invasion of Europe, by which point two group was part of 2nd Tactical Air Force, all four Mitchell squadrons moved to bases in France and Belgium, Melsproek, to support Allied ground forces. The British Mitchell squadrons were joined by No. 342, Lorraine. Squadron of the French Air Force in April 1945. As part of its move from Bomber Command, No. 305, Polish, Squadron flew Mitchell II's from September to December 1943 before converting to the de Havilland Mosquito. In addition to No. 2 Group, the B-25 was used by various second-line RAF units in the UK and abroad. In the Far East, No. 3 PRU, which consisted of Numbers 681 and 684 squadrons, flew the Mitchell primarily MK-2s, on photographic reconnaissance sorties. The RAF was allocated 316 B-25J which entered service as the Mitchell III. Deliveries took place between August 1944 and August 1945. However, only about 240 of these bombers actually reached Britain, with some being diverted to No. 111 Atu in the Bahamas, some crashing during delivery and some being retained in the United States. The Royal Canadian Air Force, RCAF, used the B-25 Mitchell for training during the war. Post-war use saw continued operations with most of 162 Mitchells received. The first B-25s had originally been diverted to Canada from RAF orders. These included one Mitchell I, 42 Mitchell IIs, and 19 Mitchell IV S. No. 13, P. Squadron was formed unofficially at Arkaf Rockcliffe in May 1944 and used Mitchell II's on high altitude aerial photography sorties. Number 5 Atu, Operational Training Unit, at Boundary Bay, British Columbia, and Abbotsford, British Columbia, operated the B 25D Mitchell and the training role led together with B 24 Liberators for heavy conversion as part of the BCAP. The Arkaf retained the Mitchell until October 1963. Number 418, Auxiliary. Squadron received its first Mitchell twos in January 1947. It was followed by number 406, Auxiliary, which flew Mitchell twos and Ives from April 1947 to June 1958. Number 418 operated a mix of twos and Ives until March 1958. Number 12 Squadron of Air Transport Command also flew Mitchell Ives along with other types from September 1956 to November 1960. In 1951, the RCAF received an additional 75 B-25JS from USAF stocks to make up for attrition and to equip various second-line units. The Australians received Mitchells by the spring of 1944. The joint Australian-Dutch No. 18, Netherlands East Indies, Squadron RAF had more than enough Mitchells for one squadron, so the surplus went to re-equip the RAF's No. 2 squadron, replacing their Beauforts. During World War II, the Mitchells served in fairly large numbers with the Air Force of the Dutch government in exile. They participated in combat in the East Indies as well as on the European front. 
On June 30, 1941, the Netherlands Purchasing Commission, acting on behalf of the Dutch government in exile in London, signed a contract with North American Aviation for 162 B-25C aircraft. The bombers were to be delivered to the Netherlands East Indies to help deter any Japanese aggression into the region. In February 1942, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, BOAC, agreed to ferry 20 Dutch B-25s from Florida to Australia traveling via Africa and India, and an additional 10 via the South Pacific route from California. During March, five of the bombers on the Dutch order had reached Bangalore, India and 12 had reached Archerfield in Australia. It was agreed that the B-25s in Australia would be used as the nucleus of a new squadron, designated number 18. This squadron was staffed jointly by Australian and Dutch air crews plus a smattering of air crews from other nations, and operated under Royal Australian Air Force Command for the remainder of the war. The B-25s of number 18 squadron were painted with the Dutch national insignia, at this time a rectangular Netherlands flag and carried NEF serials. Discounting the 10 temporary B-25s delivered to 18 Squadron in early 1942, a total of 150 Mitchells were taken on strength by the NEF, 19 in 1942, 16 in 1943, 87 in 1944, and 28 in 1945. They flew bombing raids against Japanese targets in the East Indies. In 1944, the more capable B-25J Mitchell replaced most of the earlier C and D models. In June 1940, Number 320 Squadron RAF had been formed from personnel formerly serving with the Royal Dutch Naval Air Service who had escaped to England after the German occupation of the Netherlands. Equipped with various British aircraft, Number 320 Squadron flew anti-submarine patrols, convoy escort missions, and performed air-sea rescue duties. They acquired the Mitchell II in September 1943, performing operations over Europe against gun emplacements, railway yards bridges, troops and other tactical targets. They moved to Belgium in October 1944, and transitioned to the Mitchell III in 1945. Number 320 Squadron was disbanded in August 1945. Following the war, B-25s were used by Dutch forces during the Indonesian National Revolution. The U.S. supplied 862 B-25s, B, D, G, and J types to the Soviet Union under Lend-Lease during World War II via the Alaska-Siberia-Alsib ferry route. Other damaged aircraft arrived or crashed in the far east of Russia, and one Doolittle Raid aircraft landed there short of fuel after attacking Japan. The lone air where the aircraft to reach the Soviet Union was lost in a hangar fire in the early 50s while undergoing routine maintenance. In general, the B-25 was operated as a ground support and tactical daylight bomber, as similar Douglas A-20 Havocs were used. It saw action in fights from Stalingrad, with BD models, to the German surrender during May 1945, with GJ types. B-25s that remained in Soviet Air Force service after the war were assigned the NATO reporting name bank. Well over 100 B-25C S&Ds were supplied to the nationalist Chinese during the Second Sino-Japanese War. In addition, a total of 131 B-25JS were supplied to China under lend -Lease. The four squadrons of the 1st BG, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, of the 1st Medium Bomber Group were formed during the war. They formerly operated Russian built Tupolev SB bombers, then transferred to the B 25. The 1st BG was under the command of Kek, Chinese American Composite Wing, while operating B 25s. Following the end of the war in the Pacific, these four bombardment squadrons were established to fight against the communist insurgency that was rapidly spreading throughout the country. During the Chinese Civil War, Chinese Mitchells fought alongside de Havilland Mosquitoes. In December 1948, the nationalists were forced to retreat to the island of Taiwan, taking many of their Mitchells with them. However, some B 25s were left behind and were pressed into service with the Air Force of the New People's Republic of China. During the war, the Forza Aerea Brasileira FAB, received a few B 25s under land lease. Brazil declared war against the Axis powers in August 1942 and participated in the war against the U-boats in the southern Atlantic. The last Brazilian B-25 was finally declared surplus in 1970. The Royal Air Force issued at least 21 Mitchell Ives to No. 342 Squadron, which was made up primarily of free French air crews. Following the liberation of France, this squadron transferred to the newly formed French Air Force, Armée de l'Air, 
as GBI-20 Lorraine. The aircraft continued in operation after the war, with some being converted into fast VIP transports. They were struck off charge in June 1947. In October 1967, during the Nigerian Civil War, Biafra bought two Mitchells. After a few bombings in November, they were put out of action in December. Most models of the B-25 were used at some point as training aircraft. Many B-25s are currently kept in airworthy condition by air museums and collectors. At 9.40 on Saturday, July 28, 1945, a soft B-25D crashed in thick fog into the north side of the Empire State Building between the 79th and 80th floors. 14 people died, 11 in the building and the three occupants of the aircraft, including the pilot, Colonel William F. Smith. Betty Lou Oliver, an elevator attendant, survived the impact and the subsequent fall of the elevator cage 75 stories to the basement. French General Philippe Leclerc was aboard his North American B-25 Mitchell, Tailly II. When it crashed near Colombe Bichard in French Algeria on 28 November 1947, killing everyone on board. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.